Thank you, everybody, and thank you for the nice words. Uh, my name is Attila Maroshi. I work for Sophos as a senior threat researcher, and this presentation will be about IoT cyber criminals paradise. We are all IT security guys and fighting, uh, fighting against criminals. And um, in this game, the best um, way to use to avoid them is to thinking about uh, like a criminal. So let me, to be a criminal, let me be to change my hat, to be a back, black hat, and thinking about like a, a criminal too. So if I were a criminal, I would be a lazy one. I would like to earn good money because I'm a criminal, I work, and I don't want to work much. Not at all. But if I'm involved in this business, I had to hide my ass, I, I had to hide my identity as much as I, I can. Because if I would like to do it for a, for a while and don't want to be in a jail, it's compulsory. So let's um, check a couple of stories, hit the news recently. And because criminals learning and, and um, copying itself, uh, they also use the stories and uh, use the, the the news to, to copying techniques. So, uh, go back in 12, 2012, where were the, the Karna project? I think um, the most of you have heard about it. This project was, the main purpose was that to find weak uh, uh, internet devices and modify them to Telnet network, Telnet uh, service adding new features to let the device to be participate in a scanning botnet and scan the internet as fast as it possible. I think the, the best uh, result they have is 20 minutes, uh, which was very good on, on that time. This project was very um, controversial because they modified the device, which is kind of a criminalistic one, but the, the only purpose was just to scan the internet. A second case is the um, Prosumer, uh, Ray Incarna, uh, which the main purpose was to, to find the device which are open and tries to lock it before bad guys reach it to prevent uh, malicious infections. Uh, in this situation, uh, the device also changed and services were uh, uh, turned off and um, this also influence the, um, the functionality of the device, so it's also kind of criminalistic one. Um, on Krebson security, um, last year there was a record hit, a DDoS attack. Um, that time we didn't know that what is the, the, the botnet which uh, performed this, but uh, it was already known that IoT devices behind this huge attack. And one month later there was another attack which um, take offline Twitter, SoundCloud, Spotify. So these uh, big services were forced to their knees. Um, and it was known that it's Mirai and uh, the most of the device between is just creepy stuff and camera, CCTVs and, and um, creepy devices. The common stuff behind these that there are complex stuff. They are fully botnets and uh, different uh, uh, CPU architectures and it's, it's difficult. For me it's difficult. I don't want to develop such a complex botnet, but I would like to earn good money. So I have to find a different way to, to reach what I would like to. So the, yeah. What do you think about working a couple of days for half a million dollars? It's for me, as a lazy hacker, it's, it's worth, it's good. So the case study starts with Sigit Central. This is an ordinary NAS, has the ordinary features uh, a NAS has, FTP file sharing and, and other stuff. The bad thing, it has a design flow, that if you have this NAS, you can create users with username and password. You can reach and access your private folder with username and password. Maybe this password could be generated with the techniques we learned this morning. 
Uh, however, you have a public folder which you don't, uh, you are unable to turn it off. And with anonymous user, um, everyone can reach it and write it. If you put the device to the internet, your private folder will be locked, but the uh, public folder will be available and anyone can write it. Uh, bad guys also recognize it. If you check uh, the internet, maybe you use the uh, census I/O, you will find 400 devices which are listening on the internet and just waiting for you or for criminals. It's a kind of good uh, free cloud. You can use it. If you log in one of these devices with FTP, and change to the public folder, which is always there because it's embedded stuff and um, it's always have. You will find uh, a file, photo S here, and this file is the more minor C, the, the thing I would like to speak about. So what is more minor C? It's a, it's a minor uh, stuff. I've worked for Sophos more than two and a half years but I haven't seen such a simple application like this which can perform and generate such a good money like, like this. So it's an interesting one for me, as it's pretty sure. So I think most of you have heard about mining applications, mining movers. A couple of years ago, they were very popular, uh, most of them mining uh, bitcoins. But after the difficulty of mining on bitcoins, uh, increasing dramatically, uh, the criminals just choose different way to, to get money because there were no chance to, to mine even one coin with hundreds of machines. So a normal um, user PC or, or gadgets, it's not uh, enough powerful to, to, to mine uh, a coin. But there are other uh, digital currencies like Monero, which is not just a digital currency, but a cryptocurrency. It hides the users uh, very well, which is very good if I'm, if I'm a bad guy, a criminalistic one, and I really appreciate this, this uh, service. Uh, and the other thing which makes it uh, interesting is uh, that the complexity uh, the difficulty in the mining process is dramatically lower than the Bitcoin one. So it uh, makes it a very good uh, selection. So more miners see how it looks like. Uh, I think most of you, many of you, have heard about uh, and know the ANSYS applications. The most of uh, ANSYS is uh, install, uninstaller application. And bad guys like it uh, to use, uh, uh, to drop something to your PC. It's very easy to write it. A couple of lines, enough to, to drop something to your PC. This malware use this to drop all the, all the stuff inside it to your temp folder, creating uh, registry items to launch it when you start the machine. Um, the inside context of uh, this malware is the stack tools what Monero provides for anyone. So there is no developer cost on this, uh, this um, application. So they just use what already have. And um, the only thing which is interesting that uh, uh, the application has an icon, which is the same icon than uh, the Windows uh, folder icon. So if you have uh, default settings on Windows machines, this application looks like a folder, and if you are interested in what's inside the folder, you just double click on it, and you launch the application. It's a very dummy uh, tool to execute something. Some uh, more minor C has an application, a couple of lines C could enough to implement the feature if, of it. It's just generating IPs, trying to log in to FTP with anonymous user, and um, iterate over all the folders, which can be reached and copy one instance of the application to the folders. That's the spreading process. It's also very, very simple. How it looks like in, in, a, in a not perspective. 
Um, if you have a Seagate central, for example, it's listening on 21, one infected machine just generating your IP address, reaching the public folder, copying an instance to the public folder. This may be mapped or attached to your uh, inside computer. You just browse your uh, NAS device, find a folder, photo, double click on it, and your machine just infected. It's also very, very simple. It requires so many coincidence and mistakes, but as you will see, it's working very well. Uh, when the application starts, it's just uh, retrieving, downloading the test HTML file, which contains all the hashes which used uh, in a generating and the mining process. Um, so these are the wallets where the money goes. So because we have the, the wallets, we can have information about the money. So let's speak about money. The, yeah. the threat used um, MoneroPool.com to aggregate the, the mining process, uh, which um, has a very nice feature that if you know the wallet, if you know the hash, you can get the information about the, the, um, the wallets, how much money they already paid, what is the hash rate behind and relating with this hash. So because we have all the hashes, we get all the information relating with the malware. So in this unique uh, case, we have the exact information about the money they, they can produce in this way. So uh, the full uh, value, the full uh, hash power is um, roughly 700 uh, key hash per sec, which means that 42 key US dollar can earn uh, each month and more than half a million can produce a year, which is very good for for a couple of days developing. According to, Moneminer, according to Monero Pool, they already paid 1.2 million US dollar uh, to the criminals. So this threat is spreading uh, via FTP, so we think that it's worth to check that how many FTP servers could use in, in this way. So we have a very simple test that just try to log in with anonymous users and check that do we have right access on it or not. So we initially we have 12 million IP address which could be related with FTP. We just test them um, three and a half million. So the result is that 91% uh, is restricted. That's very good. 9% when anonymous user can log in, but that's, only, that's the only thing we can retrieve the uh, file list and the, the content of it, but it's public stuff. It's good. And there is 0.4% where you have the right access with anonymous users, which is not good. In a map, it looks like this. That means that there are 10 key IP address uh, where you have the ability to host some over or anything. If you extrapolate this data to the 12 million, that means there, we, uh, there are 40 key IP address a criminal could use to host movers and to spread something um, with these IP addresses. Um, okay. Uh, check the, the device where we have anonymous access with, with anonymous login with write access. 70% um, already hosting uh, the more minor C, and 23% um, has the signs that someone uh, tries to host on it something or some malicious scanner uh, tries something there. So we have the file list only, and we make this uh, calculation according to the file names, but there are many uh, threats which can be identified according uh, the file names. So that's uh, how we think that 23% uh, is already touched. And only 9% where do we do not have sign or uh, the FTP provides the ability to delete something, so they just test it and delete the file. So we don't have information about it. So, uh, 
final thoughts that um, even using these uh, stupid techniques and moreover, uh, they can produce more than $1 million. And um, these networks are uh, also increasing. And um, the power, the calculation power is just um, um, increasing day by day. So it seems that there are still more PC which could be used and infected in this way. Um, and um, these techniques, the bad things, that uh, these infections could be preventing with very, very basic, uh, basic um, things like using an antivirus or just using the FTP service in a, in a right way and tuning the, the settings, not to allow for anyone to, to copying uh, something inside your house. That was the presentation and the questions are welcome.